CNN has just learned that ISIS is now claiming responsibility for the coordinated Easter Sunday bombings at Catholic churches and luxury hotels in Sri Lanka. These bombings killed more than 300 people. A top Sri Lankan defense official said the attacks were in retaliation for the New Zealand mosque attacks, which you will remember. That is where a white supremacist killed 50 Muslims inside two mosques in Christchurch last month. This morning, there are many questions about intelligence failures. Authorities reportedly had prior information that a possible attack was coming, but did nothing to stop it. And right now, police in the country's capital are on high alert as they search for two vehicles that they say may be carrying explosives. CNN's Ivan Watson is live in Ngombo, Sri Lanka, with all of the breaking details. What's happening at this hour, Ivan? Hi there, Allison. The, that's true. ISIS is now claiming responsibility for these just horrific attacks that took place uh, across three different cities in Sri Lanka on Sunday. The attacks more than 48 hours ago. Uh, the U.S. officials were already telling CNN that it looked like it had been inspired by an organization like ISIS. Meanwhile, a senior Sri Lankan defense official has spoken in parliament, and he has blamed the coordinated terror attack on a little-known local Islamist extremist organization named National Tawheed Jamaat uh, and claiming, alleging that this homegrown organization was acting in retaliation for the deadly mass shootings that took place in Christchurch, New Zealand against two mosques there last month. A lot to unpack here, but but there is one commonality here. If these two attacks are linked by some twisted logic of retaliation, the weapons may have been different, but if you can see behind me, the end result is the same. Places of worship where innocent civilians had been gathered in prayer, ripped apart, women, men, children, innocents, cut down uh, by the scores at leaving families that will forever be broken. And the Sri Lankans are moving forward in their investigation, calling for international assistance, given that there may be, well, international links behind this very carefully coordinated series of attacks that took place on Sunday. They say they have detained at least 40 suspects, all believed to be Sri Lankans, but they're still very much on edge there is a curfew expected to go into effect at 9 p.m. tonight. John, Hi. Allison. Ivan, thank you very much for the reporting from there. Please keep us posted as you get more details. Joining us now is CNN terrorism analyst Paul Cruikshank. He's the editor-in-chief of the CTC Sentinel and the co-author of Nine Lives, My Time as the West's Top Spy Inside Al-Qaeda. Paul, we wanted to get you right back because two hours ago, ISIS had not yet claimed responsibility. Now they have. What does it say? to you that ISIS could remotely pull off an attack with this level of carnage, 321 people killed, 500 others injured. What does it say about their current viability? Well, they've uh, claimed responsibility just a few minutes uh, ago via their official messaging uh, channels, but they offer no evidence uh, yet that they were actually responsible uh, for this uh, attack. It was a very short statement saying that the attack was carried out by its fighters targeting the uh, citizens of coalition countries, the anti-ISIS coalition, and also uh, Christians. No mention of the Christchurch uh, terrorist attack in their statement, it should be uh, pointed out. But they've provided no evidence they were behind this attack uh, yet, and they put out false statements uh, previously uh, claiming responsibility for attacks they had no role in whatsoever. One example uh, was back in October 2017 with that uh, Las Vegas uh, shooting. They claim responsibility after that. They had nothing to do with that attack. Uh, so it remains to be seen whether they did have a link uh, to this. Uh, but as Barbara Starr has reported, US intelligence uh, have identified one operative they believe was uh, part of this, um, who they believe had links to ISIS. So there could well uh, be a link to ISIS. Possible that they provided uh, direction uh, to this, some assistance uh, to this attack. Uh, the group, which the Sri Lankans have said are responsible uh, for this attack within uh, Sri Lanka, a very small mm -hmm. uh, jihadi outfit that haven't really had the capacity or capability uh, to pull something like this off. So you would look as an investigator at the possibility of an assistance from an international terror network. There are 32 uh, and more 
uh, Sri Lankans that have gone to join ISIS uh, in Syria in recent years. So there's a possibility perhaps some of those fighters came back uh, to plan this attack or provided direction uh, from overseas. A lot of questions still. And one of the main questions was, was this local group that hadn't done anything like this, this caliber before, could they pull it off without assistance, which is why people began looking to places like ISIS. And also, ISIS, after what happened in New Zealand, put out an international call for retaliation, Paul. That's right. I ISIS put out an international call for retaliation. So did uh, al-Qaeda. Uh, but al-Qaeda told their supporters and followers around the world, do not attack places uh, of worship. And that's one of the reasons why I think U.S. intelligence are focusing in on ISIS as the group that maybe uh, inspired this, maybe had a link uh, to this. We'll have to wait and see in the hours to come whether ISIS puts out more information uh, suggesting they had insider knowledge about this attack. That, that may then suggest they really did have some uh, kind of role. But right now, we should absolutely not take their word for it. All right, Paul Cruikshank, as always, excellent advice and insight from you. Thank you very much for being with us this morning. <laughs>